Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a low-powered mini PC from Geekcom known as the Mini Air 12. And to tell you the truth, I wasn't even going to review this, but I started doing some research on this mini PC and it definitely looks like we've got the last of the Intel NUX. Now, as a lot of us already know who are into these mini PCs, Intel stopped their NUX line a little while ago, their mini PC line. And what it looks like we have here is the last of the Intel NUX. Now, I do remember a similarly spec Intel NUX being announced, but it was never released. And if you just take a look around this, it's definitely putting off those vibes. We will do a teardown, and I'll show you some interesting stuff internally. And another thing I noticed here was, uh, you know, the bottom definitely looks like the Intel NUX. We've got a sticker right over it. Now, I haven't peeled anything off, but we will do a teardown so I can just give you a look at all of the internals. But yeah, I mean, we've got a very small footprint, low-powered mini PC here. It's a nice little desktop, and with a little bit of tweaking and tuning, this could be a great little desktop replacement. Now, it's not going to be an ultimate gaming machine, but you can definitely get some work done on it. 4K video playback and indie games actually run quite well. Inside of the box, along with the Mini Air 12, we do get a mounting plate, so we could actually mount this on the back of a monitor, HDMI cable, and our power supply. This is actually a 44 watt power supply. I don't think we're going to be pulling anywhere near that, but it's definitely plenty for this little system. Taking a look at the overall I.O. Up front here, we've got a USB Type-C port, and this is for data only. Unfortunately, it doesn't support video. One full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 port and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Over on the left-hand side, we've got a full-size SD card reader. And around back, we've got our power in, mini display port 1.4, gigabit ethernet, two more full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, another Type-C port, and HDMI 2.0. Getting to the internals here is pretty easy. We've just got these four screws on the bottom. There's no extra room in this small case for a 2.5-inch drive. We've got a single 2280 M.2 NVMe SSD and a single stick of RAM because the CPU here only supports single-channel RAM, but it is DDR5 at 4800 megatransfers per second. Looks like we've got a Lexar 620 NVMe SSD, and the RAM is from ADATA. Now, if we get a bit closer, you can actually see that this says Nook AN01MB DDR5 V10. Now, this doesn't completely mean that it's a NUC, because a lot of these mini PC manufacturers do call these mini PCs NUCs, but it's a pretty big coincidence that we've got the overall look of a real Intel NUC, and we've also got some markings internally. Now, I haven't seen anything labeled Intel at all on this, but we do have an Intel chip. In fact, this is powered by the Intel N100. We've got four cores, four threads, boost clock up to 3.4 gigahertz, built-in Intel UHD graphics with 24 execution units, and these will boost up to 750 megahertz, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 at 4,800 megatransfers per second. Remember, the N100 only supports single-channel RAM, a 2280 M.2 NVMe SSD, and you can go up to two terabytes here. It's got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is going to be running Windows 11. Okay, first things first, dug around in the BIOS, not much that we can change. And this chip is definitely a low power chip. We've got that Intel N100, four cores, no extra threads. The N100 only supports single channel RAM. So that's why we see a lot of these mini PCs with just a single DIMM. DDR5, 4800 megatransfers per second. We've got 16 gigs. And of course, we've got that Intel UHD iGPU up to 750 megahertz. So I want to show you real quick what kind of TDP we're working at. Now, this is actually a 6 watt chip. Most manufacturers have this set at around 10 to 12 watts. Stress the CPU out. You can see right here from our power, CPU power is at 10 watts. Like I mentioned, I tried to find a couple BIOS settings. Nothing much we can do there, but we can use a third party application. I've resorted to an older application that still works on these newer chips. We've got Throttle Stop. So from TPL, I've got this set at 35, and this chip isn't going to go up to 35 even when you max out the CPU and GPU. But we'll go ahead and make sure this is on. Now, when we stress the CPU out, you can see it jumps up to 21, and that's because we're really not hitting up the GPU. Throwing in a little bit of a GPU load here with GPU Z you can see it goes up to 30 watts. And again, out of the box, a lot of these are set at 10 watts, and that's why a lot of people aren't seeing great performance out of the N100. But taking it up here, it's not going to thermal throttle with the cooling system they have. And yeah, I mean, it really does unlock those clocks, especially on the iGPU. 
And with the N100 at this kind of wattage, it's actually a pretty decent everyday desktop experience. So for web browsing, email checking, light document editing, uh, web browsing is super fast here. We've got Wi-Fi 6, pretty image heavy website. Just head right over here. This is Geekcom's website. Learn more. Everything loads right up. Not too bad. And this thing also handles 4K video playback. So what we're going to do here is go ahead and pause this. Make sure we're at 4K. Right here. So we're at a true 4K. Stats for nerds. Give it a second. And with this, we're not going to get any drop frames. Same goes for your favorite website. You want to head over to Netflix or Hulu. It's going to handle 4K playback. Right now, 4K 60 HDR from YouTube. Stats for nerds in the top left hand corner, zero drop frames. These little Intel UHD iGPUs actually handle video playback really, really well, and the N100 is no different. So yeah, not too bad, but remember we do have that TDP up, which really does make a difference. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were a couple benchmarks that I ran on this. Now it's not going to blow anybody's mind, but the first one we have here is Geekbench 6. Single core, 1,191. Multi, 3,189. I mean, even just judging by this synthetic, we're not working with a very powerful CPU here. And when it comes to the iGPU, I ran a couple 3D Mark tests. Wildlife, 2,968. And I also ran Night Raid, 4,724. So it's not going to win any benchmark awards, and we're not going to be doing AAA gaming on this but there's still some lower end games that are a lot of fun to play that'll run at full speed. Here's Minecraft and I'm using the Windows preview version. Up in the top left hand corner, you can see I've got Afterburner running. We're at 60 FPS every once in a while, get a little dip down to 59, something I personally would never notice. And if you take a look at that package power, this is CPU and GPU combined. Every once in a while, you'll see it jump up to 29 watts. Now I've tried to run this at 10 watts, and I mean, we can kind of get close to 60, but it really does fall on its face, especially once you start cruising across the world. So up in that TDP really helps out with gaming also. Next up, we've got Hades, just a nice little indie, very fun to play. If you haven't played it, I highly suggest downloading it from Steam. And initially, I was really hoping we could do this at 120 hertz with this little system. Unfortunately, maximum would be about 78 FPS. So turning V-Sync on at 60 is kind of the way to go. And the final game I wanted to test here was OG Skyrim. With this, I did have to drop it down to 720p low in order to get 60 out of it. You could run this at 30, medium, 1080 if you wanted to but uh, I wanted that smooth frame rate, and it is locked right there at 60. Another thing I wanted to take a look at was just total system power consumption, and we know that this is a very low power consumption PC out of the box. TVP set at 10 watts, idles at 5 watts, 4K video playback does jump up to 9 watts, and the maximum I can get this to pull, even just through gaming or anything, is 13 watts, and that's at that stock TDP. Now in this video, we did take it up to 30 watts, and that's a maximum between the GPU and CPU. Still idles at 5 watts, 4K video playback sitting at 9, but of course, while gaming or running more intensive tasks, we can pull a lot more. This jumps up to 26 watts while gaming, and that's on average across everything that I tested. And remember, this is total from the wall. I use a kilowatt meter to do all of my testing. This isn't just the TDP from the CPU. This is everything this many PCs pull in. So yeah, it's a very small footprint, very low power consumption PC. Definitely not for everybody, but if you know you're getting into something like this just for web browsing, document editing, maybe some 4K video playback, light indie gaming, then you could get by with a PC like this. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments. One thing I was really interested in checking out was something like Manjaro running on the N100. I personally haven't done any kind of research on these N100 Linux drivers, but you know, installing Linux, a lightweight operating system on a lower end chip like this could really up the performance. And if you want to see a video like that, just let me know. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button, think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.